Hi, thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Today's focus is our core value, radical service. Our scripture reference is Philippians chapter 2. You can download the Life Notes now from calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, let's hear from Chad Garrison along with special guest Amber Smith. Enjoy the message. Hey, I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2 is our text, and if you are in the room and you don't have a Bible or uh, a Bible app on your device, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1,165. You'll find Philippians chapter 2. You'll be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you are in one of our campuses, any of our campuses, and you don't have a Bible and you want one, please take one. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word and read God's Word. If uh, you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then ask the the online service host or email us at calvaryaz.com. We'll be glad to get you a Bible because we know if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, uh, obviously I'm not uh, preaching alone today, uh, this weekend, uh, and so uh, Amber Smith is with us. She is our serve director uh, here at Calvary, so a lot of the community events and things that are going on. She's the one who's heading those up, and if that's something that you love to do and you love that we do, and you want to be a part of that on a, on a maybe a more significant level, then uh, see her. She'll be available after all the services at our Sweetwater campus uh, this weekend. Uh, also, uh, just for disclosure, she is married to our executive pastor, Robert Smith, who is leading the group down in Baja this weekend, so as well. Some of you like Robert. Some are kind of, you know, I won't tell him. Don't worry. Hey, uh, speaking of reading and applying God's Word, uh, we are in the midst of our sermon series called About Us, where we're looking at the mission and core values of Calvary. And uh, we talked about our mission, you know, which is leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. We talked about our core values, relatable truth, transparent living, contagious celebration. And today we're talking about radical service. So, uh, Reading and applying God's word. Have you ever read a passage in the Bible that uh, God really used to change your life? Do you, have a, do you have a verse or a passage that, that really has made a difference with you? Uh, like, not just like, oh, I like that verse, but I mean, it has changed your life and your perspective. Uh, if so, then I hope in life group this week or over uh, a meal with friends, you will talk about that and share that. But uh, God's, I've got a couple that we're going to look at today uh, as we look at the text. And the first one of those is Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And if you're looking, following in your Bible, I just want to warn you, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to quote it to you because I learned it in a different translation, and I, I like mine better. Uh, actually... It was like 45 years ago, and, I, you know, and, and it was New American Standard Version, and I don't even know if that's what they have uh, today. But anyway, I learned it like this. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but rather with humility of mind, consider others more important than yourselves. Do not merely look after your own interests, but also the interests of others. And, and what, what impacted me is when I began to live that out, when I began to try to kill the selfishness inside of me, because there's a lot of it there, uh, and I began to try and, and look to the interest of others on an equal footing with mine, then God started changing everything about my life. Everything about my life. And, and it's why this passage is used to support our core value of radical service. Now, Radical service is this. We believe that followers of Jesus best demonstrate love to others through acts of kindness and service. Followers of Jesus best demonstrate the love to others through acts of kindness and service. In other words, it's not telling them that we love them. It is showing them that we love them. And we just believe that if we want to communicate God's love to people, especially people who don't go to church, who don't ever think about going to church, who actually think bad things about people who go to church, uh, then we're going to be more effective by showing them the love of God instead of just telling them about the love of God. Yeah, so the first thing about radical service is that radical service is essential to representing Jesus. 
See, Jesus was the ultimate servant. He is our example in what it is to be a servant. Um, continually in Philippians 2, it gives us the reason for why we serve, and it's because Jesus served. And side note, um, we just talked about word for the day. We are going to be going through the book of Philippians through word for the day. So if you're interested in setting that a little bit more, uh, sign up to watch that. How many, how many of you actually ever watch word for the day? Like even if you saw, okay, that's a lot of hands. Yeah. That's a lot of people who didn't raise hands. So if you're interested in that, just go to the website, sign up, and, and we, you know, if, look, if, if you, you know, want to listen, it's going to take you three or four minutes and hopefully start your day off uh, on a positive note. So, sorry, that's a plug. Um, in verse 5 in Philippians 2, it says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. And so the reason that we serve is that we have the same mindset that Jesus had when he came to earth. And the rest of the text talks about how Jesus came to earth, was left heaven, born of a virgin, and he went to the cross died for our sin, was buried, and rose three days later. And that's why he deserves all of the glory and praise um, for all of eternity. But if you have made a decision to follow Jesus for the rest of your life, um, surrendered your life, and call him Lord and Savior, then he is your example for life. And we follow his example and lead, and his whole life was about serving. In Matthew 20, in verse 28, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says this about himself. He says, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. See, Jesus came to earth not to be served, but to serve. And that's what the gospel's about. If you read all, all of the gospels, it's Jesus' life. And all throughout the gospels, you can see how Jesus served others. I'll give you some examples. In John 2, you can see how he served his family, his mother in particular. Uh, in John 11, he served his friends. Um, in John chapters 4 through 6, it's continual stories of how he served strangers. And in John 13, he served the people that were going to betray him. He served all of the disciples, including Judas and Peter. And he served us. That's what the gospel is about. Jesus coming down and serving us. He was the perfect servant and sacrifice to do for us what we could not do on our own. He took the punishment for our sins so that we could be reconciled to God, be made right with God, and have a relationship with him. And if you've committed your life to following Jesus, then my question is, are you actually following him? Are you following his example by serving? See, Luke 6, 46, Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? And this is a question that all of us should wrestle with and, and go to God with of, am I actually doing what Jesus calls me to do with my life? Because we cannot represent Jesus unless we reflect his character, and serving is essential to Jesus' character. Yeah, so uh, the, the first sub-point is radical service is essential to representing Jesus. And uh, just gonna uh, do a, another plug here. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, wow, you know, I am a follower of Jesus and I'm not actively serving right now, there's so many ways you can do that in the context of Calvary. And, uh, you know, we've got mission trips and things like that, you know, like the group down in Baja and, and uh, we, we take groups to Zambia and we went to Honduras, all those kind of things. But uh, there's also just the week-to-week -week activities here. And if you love kids, you know, and can pass a background check, then, you know, children's ministry is a great place for you. Uh, if uh, you love teenagers, I know there's some of you out there, and you can pass a background check. And there's student ministry if, you, if you're friendly then we always need greeters and, and our first impressions team. If you're not friendly, we have a security, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's not true, not, don't listen to that. Uh, but uh, anyway, there's all kinds of ways for you guys to, to serve and if you're sitting there going, how can I serve? And if you can't figure that out, then, then make an appointment with one of the pastors, trust me, they will recruit you. Uh, and uh, we've got places for us to serve. So radical service, is essential to representing Jesus, and radical service is our strategy to reach the unchurched. It, it's our strategy uh, for, for life change, okay? I mean, that's how, you know, we're, we're planning on doing this. Uh, see, it's rare for an unchurched person to just get up one day and go, I think I'm gonna go to church. 
I mean, it just it doesn't happen very often. Occasionally, if they have a church background and they haven't been in church forever, then they might just go, hey, let's go to church. Our life's falling apart. We need to do that. But what isn't rare is for an unchurched person to say yes to an invitation by one of their family members or friends that they trust. In fact, surveys through the years have not changed at all that over 80% of unchurched people say it is very likely that they would go to church if a church friend or a family member invited them to go with them. Isn't that amazing? Eight out of 10. Now, some of you are like, I've asked 10 people and eight of them did not say yes. Uh, and I don't have an answer for that. But, uh, but, but you're, you're, obviously they didn't survey you. So, uh, Here's the thing. We serve our community in all the ways that we do. And, and you guys hear about these all the time. But, you know, we, serve, we do serve our schools. And, and we try to make our kids' classrooms better and, and the campuses more attractive. We do Main Street and the Halloween Fright Night thing, which is coming up. So next week, start bringing your candy. You're going to hear about it and start signing up to volunteer and, and uh, sugar up the kids of Havasu and Parker and, and everywhere. Uh, we do the Christmas backpacks and angel tree at Christmas. And, and a lot of you, well, about a thousand backpacks were done last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, you know, teacher appreciation, night to shine. The, you know, we do benevolence, uh, over $100,000 last year to people in our community. We support the food bank, pregnancy care, faith and grace, all these different organizations. We do that so that when you invite, notice I say when you invite, not if you invite, but when you invite, because the mission of Calvary depends on you, okay? If we're gonna lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, you guys gotta invite them. It's, it's so when you invite them, then it's more likely that they're gonna say yes because of all the stuff we're doing in the communities. We wanna convince people to say yes when you invite them to come to church. All right, that, that's what we're trying to do. It, look, it looks like this. Uh, Amber and I are gonna role play uh, a little bit like uh, what if you were actually going to invite your unchurched friend to church? This is what the conversation might sound like. We're just guessing, so go ahead. Hey, uh, are you available to go to church with me this weekend? Uh, I'm not going to say, wow, you go to church now. Just kidding. Um, well, I don't ever go to, no, look, I'm just, sorry. If they think that when you invite them, hey, we got to talk about some other stuff. Okay, well, hey, I know you go to church. Uh, which, which church is it that you go to? I go to Calvary. Wait, is that the one that, uh, like, painted my kid's classroom at their, yeah. at their school? Really? Is that the one that, like, Sugared up my kids uh, at Fright Night on Main Street. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you guys give away more candy than anybody else yes, on, on the whole Main Street. Candy. I know. So, um, well, you know what? I, I never think about going to church, but that church, maybe? Yeah, okay. So, if I, if I said yes, um, how long does the service last? It won't be any longer than an hour. An hour? Yep. Okay. Uh, I could probably put up with that, no matter how bad it was. Um, <laughs> what... What would I have to wear? Do I have to get dressed up? Like, I don't even own a suit and tie. I live in Havasu. No. Nope, you can wear whatever you wear. What you have on is just fine. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not going to ask this out loud, but I am going to think it. Is it weird? No. Maybe a little, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> See, you got to think about how your friends are going to respond, and, and what we're trying to do is make it easy for you to invite them and, and give them an experience where they're going to hear the truth of the gospel and, and some great music that they don't know and, and, uh, and see what it is for people to worship the living God. And we trust that God's going to lead them to that life-changing relationship with himself. So radical service is our strategy to reach the unchurched. Uh, and by the way, I'm just going to point this out. I mentioned this uh, last week. It's working. You guys are doing a great job inviting your unchurched friends and family. We're seeing that happen. We're seeing life change happen with over 200 baptisms so far in 2024. And I think that's worth celebrating. So Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, uh, changed my life. Uh, but another passage that I want us to look at is, is impactful as well. It made a huge difference early on in my ministry. And that is in Matthew 25. It's on page 988 if you want to flip over to it. Uh, and, and it says this. This is the uh, beginning of verse 31. Jesus is talking. It's one of the, the parables about the end times. And he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. And before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, 
Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these of my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, this is a warning from Jesus. Now, it's also a, co- a commendation as well. It's both and, because uh, he's telling, you know, one group of people, great job, you did an excellent job. He's telling another group of people, you did a terrible job. Uh, in, a, in, a, in essence, you failed the test. You failed the test. Now, just to be really clear, this is not saying that if you're a good person, you're going to heaven. Okay, let me be really clear about that. He's not telling you how to be saved in this passage. Uh, it's, not, you know, it's saying if you are a follower of Jesus, then you will care about people. Okay, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're gonna care about people. But to be a Jesus follower means that you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, And you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. It is personal. You believe that Jesus was raised from the dead and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life. Now, if you've done that, then then great. You're you're in. You're going to heaven. If you haven't made that decision, if you've been thinking about it or this is the first time you've ever been confronted with that truth about what the gospel is and what it means to be a follower of Jesus, we would love to continue that conversation. And uh, you can fill out a connect card and we'll give you a call this week. Or our prayer team will be here at the front after the service. They would love to talk with you and pray with you. Uh, Pastors will be out in the foyers and we would just find one of us and we would love to talk with you about what it means to have a life-changing relationship with Jesus. But we don't want anyone to fail the test. Okay, but the test is whether whether you know Jesus or not. But if you are a follower of Jesus, then let's talk about what it means to be that faithful servant of God, the ones who say, come you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. So the first thing that we see is servants see the needs. See, the people who went to eternal punishment, which is hell, they all had an excuse, and it was the same one. When did we see you? Um, Philippians 2, 4 says, look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. That look is a verb. It requires action and it requires intentionality on our part. We have to be able to look up and outside of ourself, um, outside of our own world, and see the people around us and see their needs. Um, We are naturally, as sinners, selfish and self-centered. Just look at a toddler. They only care about themselves. They don't care about you or your day or if you don't feel good or what's going on. All they care about themselves and if they want their snack right then and there, okay? That's all they care about. You can even look at my nine-year-old son, um, and I have permission to share this. Um, Eli loves Jesus, but he's nine, and he's self-centered, okay? Um, He is a very big, strong kid, okay? Um, And he accidentally hurts people all the time. He will try to be sweet and he'll try and like put his arm around me, but he isn't paying attention. So he'll just like elbow me in the face. Um, Or he will just like be walking and knock over his little sister. And he will say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even see her standing there. Like you don't see your sister there and you just walk right through her. Um, This happens all the time. But he says this, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. 
It's because he's not paying attention to anyone but himself, and he's just focused on himself and what he's doing. He's not intentionally being mean or hurtful, but he is hurting people on accident because he's not looking out for others around us. And we are the same way. We are being unintentional, hurting people, or not realizing how we interact with people because we're not taking the time to look outside of our own life and see other people around us. Um, See, if we are not having a, a daily relationship, being intentional with our time with Jesus every single day, we are not going to be able to see people the way that Jesus does. Jesus sees people made in the image of God, with value and worth whom he loves, who we have the opportunity to serve and show God's love to. See, none of us have an excuse before God. And I just wanna take a moment here and also address um, something that some of you might be thinking as well, because I had this conversation this week of some of you might be feeling, I'm not worthy enough to serve God. Um, Whether it's someone told you that Uh, you weren't worthy enough or you think something in your past makes you not worthy, I want to tell you right now that's a lie because if you have a relationship with God, he has called you, he has chosen you, you belong to him and he has gifted all of us differently so that we have gifts and abilities to be able to serve each other and, and those who don't know Jesus yet. So we are all called by God, loved, chosen, gifted to serve, and so none of us have an excuse. And so do we see the needs of the people around us? Do we see our spouse's needs? And we love them and encourage them and serve them and bless them in our actions and words. Do we see our kids' needs and engage with them and have conversations with them? Do we correct them and discipline them? Do we point them to Jesus in every area of their life? Do you see your friends' needs? Do you see when they're struggling and hurting? Do you see the needs of your coworkers or the nurses that are taking care of you or a family member? Do you see the needs of the waitresses of the restaurants you go to? Do you see the need of the person on the corner of the street? See, it's not my job to judge whether or not anyone deserves help or need it. My job is to be obedient to Jesus and what he calls me to do. And he says that if I serve anyone else, that I'm serving him. Yeah. So servants see the needs and faithful servants take action. They take action. You know, um, the road to hell is paved with good... Intentions. Yeah. Yeah. Good intentions. We all know that. We've all heard that. Uh, But here's the thing. Good intentions produce zero fruit. Good intentions uh, don't recognize Jesus in other people. Good intentions ask, when did we see you? Because they didn't do anything. They thought about it. They had good intentions, but they didn't have good results. They didn't take action. Uh, Servants, faithful servants take action. And, and, and Jesus' half-brother, the Apostle James, in his letter, in chapter 1, verse 22, said, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, and so deceive yourselves. Let me say that again. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, and so deceive yourselves. The temptation is to hear and, and think about doing good things, but not actually doing them. And, and there was a group of people that failed the test in Matthew 25 that that. Had, might have had good intentions, but they didn't follow through on anything. And, and see, that's why we emphasize, that's why we value radical service so much, because it's doing things that make a difference in our community and to the ends of the earth. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this weekend, as we're talking about radical service, we're also uh, leaning into Compassion International. Uh, and so it's Compassion Weekend while we're talking about radical service. Yeah, so... We have provided an opportunity this weekend to put what we were talking about into practice um, so none of us have an excuse um, because we don't want to just listen to a sermon um, and then it not impact our life. Jesus wants to hear us to hear the truth of Scripture and let it change our life. So we have Compassion International here. Um, I'm a huge advocate for them. Um, Personally, I've been sponsoring kids with them for about 12 years. 
Um, I believe in the organization, I trust them. I used to sponsor with um, other organizations and switch to them because of the integrity of the organization itself. Um, Calvary has had had a partnership with them for about seven years, um, and we have um, funded and sponsored two compassion centers now <clears throat> in Honduras. Um, by the way, if you don't know what a compassion center is, it's basically us building a church in Honduras, and they, they build, do this all over the world, but building a church, and, and it has a pastor, and they do worship services on, on the weekend, and they do Bible studies at night, uh, but during the week, it is a place of radical service, mm -hmm. and, and up to 300 kids come to the Compassion Center, and, and, and they feed them, and they educate them, and they you know, provide medical care, and they teach hygiene, and they try to elevate kids out of poverty mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Yeah, so all of the kids um, that we have this weekend are from those two centers. Um, and I, would, I think it would be so cool if all 300 kids uh, would be sponsored by Calvary people. So that our two centers um, that Calvary's funded is sponsored, all the kids, by Calvary people. Um, and I think that would be so cool having them get to know Jesus, the life change that's going to happen in the kids' lives, that impacts the family's life, that impacts the community, um, all because of people here in Calvary um, being obedient to what God has called them to do. Um, I've been to Honduras. I've seen the Compassion Centers. I've met my kids that I've sponsored. Um, it's amazing. It's life-changing. Um, but we have a video from some other people that went to that want to share their story as well. It impacted me by trusting God more uh, with, our, with our money. You know, when Compassion first came to the church and we went through the trailer, you always look at, okay, all these beautiful faces of kids, and so they want you to sponsor one, and you're thinking in the back of your mind, where's my money going? You know, wh you know what's really going on after so many years of law enforcement and the scams that happen uh, to people, uh, there was a, a lot of doubt in the back of my mind. But um, we sponsored a child uh, after talking to Chad, and he reassured me that compassion was a real deal. And eventually, after a, a, a couple of years, we sponsored another child. Uh, so we sponsored Henry the first time, and then Anna the second. And uh, But going on the trip really just opened my eyes. Seeing the Compassion Center that the church built and seeing the children that we were sponsoring and what's going on at that center and the joy that it brings these kids, it sold me. I mean, if you have any doubt about where your money's going for Compassion, don't doubt it. It's totally the best thing you can do. And those kids are very fortunate and blessed uh, because of you. The culture is different but the same, so the environment's different and um, their surroundings are different, but inside there's still people, they still love Jesus and He still lives in their heart. There's, there's that common thread that even though things look different and feel different, um, our hearts are all the same. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually have another trip coming up next year to go to Honduras um, and visit Compassion Kids that you sponsor. So it's going to be next September, September 18th through 25th, 2025. Um, and you guys can go ahead and sign up for that if you're interested in going and meeting a kid that you sponsor. You do have to sponsor a child to go on the trip. Um, it's $2,500. Um, it is limited spots, so only 20 people can go. Um, and so if you've heard about this or are interested in going, you can go on our website and reserve your spot right now. Um, so if you go, again, on our website, calvaryaz.com, and go to our events page, you can sign up for that. Um, it's uh, life-changing, and it's amazing. Um, I've talked with the, the moms of the kids that I sponsor, and they're telling me how they wouldn't have enough food um, without compassion. And they're showing me like the shoes and the clothes they were able to get their growing kids because of compassion. And they get to go to church um, and it impacts their life in, in amazing ways. So this is real and impactful. 
Um, and even if you can't go on the trip, you can use the resources that God has blessed you with to be able to invest in a kid's life and feed them and clothe them and give them clean water. And most importantly, share the hope of Jesus with them. Um, because when we serve these kids, we get to serve Jesus by doing that. Yeah. And it's $43 a month to sponsor a child. I spend more than that on Diet Pepsi every month. <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing that some of you spend more on coffee uh, every month than that. It definitely costs more than one meal out uh, for Merle and I when uh, we just go eat at a, an average place. So, uh, you know, I, and look, I'm a huge fan of Compassion International. Merle and I are multi generational sponsors of kids. So when our girls were little, we sponsored children uh, for them. And then those. Those kids grew up and aged out of compassion, and now we sponsor a child of compassion for every grandchild that we have. And, and that's kind of our thing. In fact, uh, I mean, we're going we're gonna to add one extra one because I want one from the new center that we're building. I want to sponsor a child from there. And, uh, and I've got uh, another one that's uh, in Uganda that's about to age out. So... Uh, you know, uh, it's such a great way of thinking about this. If God has provided you the resources, look, there's some of you right now that $43 a month, you can't afford that, and I get that, and, and God gets that. Uh, but there's some of you that, that that's nothing, and you can make a difference. Uh, you know, I told you, Matthew 25 impacted my life. And, and I'm just going to be real blunt. I, I read that uh, when I was a youth pastor, and I was uh, taking my youth group through curriculum that was about kids that didn't have enough to eat, and we were raising money for that. And, and I sat there, and I, I looked at that, and I went, wow, I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you came. All, all those different things. And, and I don't know if you, you, know, you see this or aware of this, but as a church, uh, I've tried to lead us to address all those different things. I mean, we sponsor the food bank uh, here in town, and that's helping to feed people. We give out gift cards to the grocery store, uh, helping people through benevolence. Uh, we, uh, and, and then, of course, we you know, have compassion. Uh, you know, we, people are thirsty, and we've built uh, over 100 freshwater wells in Mozambique to the poorest of the poor, so that 75,000 people a day have clean drinking water because of you. And, and we, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, in terms of a stranger and inviting me in, we're building a home for strangers right now in Baja yeah. as we speak. Well, right now they're eating tacos. But uh, <laughs> they've been building the, the home. And uh, tomorrow they'll get to bless it and dedicate it to God for this family uh, who, who has come to Jesus. Uh, it, we have chaplains that go and visit the sick and those who, you know, do prison ministry, all these different things. And, but that's us as a church. We as a church are doing great. But I gotta ask you, what are you gonna do? You see, you may hear this need and you may think, I wanna do something, but uh, you know what? We can't change the world. And that's true, we can't change the world. But I'll tell you this, you and I can change the world for one person, one child, if we decide that we're gonna listen to Jesus and we're gonna honor him and we're gonna do something, we're gonna take action because we are faithful servants of the living God. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you that you took action to rescue us from our sin, that you made the ultimate sacrifice and you sent your one and only son into this world to suffer and die for me, to suffer and die for everyone in this room to suffer and die for everyone who's watching online, to suffer and die for the children uh, in poverty. And God, we know we're blessed. As Americans, we know that we're blessed. We know that we waste more money than, than uh, uh, we ever care to admit. But we wanna be good stewards and we wanna care for those that are the least of these. And Lord, I know you convicted me years ago. Uh, and I just pray that, that we would listen to you and that we would rejoice that you have blessed us and we would be grateful and we would be generous. And in one way or another, that we make sure that we take action and, and that we can say yes when you said I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. So God, help us 
to be those faithful servants. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Followers of Jesus best demonstrate love to others through acts of kindness and service. I hope you've enjoyed today's sermon and are on the lookout for opportunities to share the love of Jesus by serving others. If today's message spoke to you and you'd like to support Calvary's ministry, you can do so by visiting our website, calvaryaz.com. The homepage has links to contact us, give, listen to past sermons, and subscribe to receive our Word for the Day daily devotionals. Well, that's all for today. I hope you'll join us again next week. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.